Greetings, this is your daily meta for January 7th. And incidentally, this picture shows you uh, Eknath Ishwin, whom I mentioned a while back, as being the person who really introduced me to Gandhi. So uh, I'd like to talk about the very end of my introduction and with that lead into a very good question that's been sent in. So I say, uh, we are here in a culture where violence seems to dominate everything. And the question we're leading up to is where does nonviolence come from? I say a surprising number of the projects we'll be looking at in the ensuing pages led to results, good results, beyond what the actors had a right to anticipate. I'm saying this to give us kind of sense of what kind of force nonviolence is. Often their best and most enduring successes were not quite what they intended. Indeed, sometimes what they intended to do failed. We'll be calling this work versus work when we get to that topic. But in every case, they did one right thing. They chose persuasion and inclusion over threat, power, and hatred and domination. They chose nonviolence. So it's often remarkable to me how, despite the very complicated world that we live in, it really is a product of two forces. And uh, St. Augustine and many others have noticed this. And if we choose the right force, we can't predict exactly how it will play out, but we can predict that it'll play out well. If we choose the wrong force, we can't predict how it will exactly will play out, but we can predict that it will play out badly. And the best name for those two forces in today's world, the ones that focus us best so we can kind of understand what we're talking about, are violence and nonviolence. So the question I wanted people to think about is where does violence come from? And I think uh, in terms of the human spirit, it ultimately comes from a, an instinct for self-preservation. Well, where does nonviolence come from? It also comes from the instinct for self-preservation, but it's with a higher sense of the self. And I'd have to say that if we have an instinct toward competition and self-preservation, I think if you examine what human beings do, we also have an instinct for self-sacrifice, for sacrificing the smaller self in favor of a larger self. So perhaps what we can think of, uh, think about for the next uh, daily meta is this. You're all are familiar with the instinct for self-preservation. It leads us to do a number of things. Sometimes it gets us involved in competition with others, but isn't there also an instinct for self-sacrifice? If you uh, look around you, if you look at your own feelings, your own behavior, perhaps you can identify a few instances of this instinct for self-sacrifice this instinct for service manifesting itself. And perhaps when you see it manifesting itself, you can also spot the results. We're going to be sharpening the ability to do that in the course of this study. So that was Daily Meta for January 7th. And as Gandhi used to say, if this sounds interesting, if it sounds intriguing, we're invited to join the experiment.